Good morning. I welcome you to worship today here at Our Savior's In the Name of God, the Ageless Promise, Jesus, the Merciful Purpose, the Holy Spirit, our newfound patience. We here at Our, at our Savior's are a people on a mission, and so there's always much to share with you in terms of what's going on, how we are, in fact, engaged in that holy work. Here are some of the highlights that we need you to, to hear today. Last week, there were 12 amazing volunteers from our saviors who served at Food to You, the mobile food pantry distribution. They served 71 households that day, about 237 people, including 26 seniors and about 100 hungry children, giving each household about 40 pounds of food. So we owe them our gratitude for their excellent work on our behalf. Uh, you may have noticed on your way in today, the Bloodmobile is here. You can give a pint and save a life today. Plus, they have snacks, I'm told, so give the gift of life and have a granola bar. It's, in the, it's about an equal exchange, we think. There's a whole pumpkin patch of exciting things happening next weekend. First, on Sunday, October 9th, people of every age are invited to our Pumpkin Prayers Cross-Gen event. Between worship services, everyone can head downstairs to the fellowship hall to paint a pumpkin with your prayers. It's a lot of fun. Also next weekend, Our Saviors is proud to co-host an Indigenous People's Day celebration with our teammates across the street at Augustana University. We're partnering to host a meal and speaker event. That's on Sunday, October 9th, 5 to 7 p.m. There's an optional book discussion of the lovely book, Crooked Hallelujah, in the Friendship Room at 4 o'clock. Dinner will include buffalo stew, homemade, by the way, and fry bread for a free will donation. And you can hear from Prairie Rose Seminole, a Sanish Arikara, Northern Cheyenne educator, advocate, and former director of the ELCA's American Indian Alaska Native Program. All are welcome. Again, that's next Sunday evening. Uh, maybe you've been glued to all the news about the British royals. It's certainly not that difficult to tune into that coverage. But we have a special event to learn about a different kind of monarch. We invite you to join our Savior's member, Joyce Cotts, at Friendship Club, where Joyce will discuss her book, Raising Little Stripe. It's a book about raising monarch butterflies and how this miracle of nature has taught her meaningful life lessons. Stick around after the presentation for lunch and fellowship. That's October 11th, a Tuesday. Presentation at 11, lunch at noon. If you feel a bit unsteady on your feet these days, don't lose heart. Join our upcoming Matter of Balance class, which will meet Mondays and Wednesdays in the morning, 9.30 to 11.30, starting October 10th. It'll run through November 2nd. Do you have a heart for children? Do you care about our teachers who need more support than ever these days? You should know that Our Saviors has a vital partnership with Susan B. Anthony Elementary, providing mentors and teacher appreciation and all manner of support. But we need some more teammates, especially to help us provide teacher appreciation. Speak to Pastor Justin if you feel the call to help out over at Susan B. Anthony. And lastly, the staff has been talking about hosting a board and card game night here at Our Saviors, but we need a small team to help us pull it off. Talk to Pastor Justin to volunteer as a willing pawn to make it happen. <laughs> All right. The Holy Spirit has drawn us together for this holy work of worship. We turn now to confession and forgiveness, the right place for us to begin. God made us to love God and to grow together in a society of gratefulness. But in our sinfulness, we grow suspicious of differences. 
We protect our own interests. And we easily drift away from those God made us to love. So please humbly confess with me today. God, we reluctantly confess because we do not like admitting our sin. We fear the embarrassing truth of our mistakes. We snap to our own defense. And once the painful past creates an ugly scar, we avoid probing it ever again. We come to believe that naming our divisions drives us further apart, but hiding our sin has allowed it to fester. When we should have grown in love, we have become strangers. When we should have identified with our neighbors, we have grown indifferent. You call us to renounce evil and cultivate goodness, but the sin in our society poisons us like venom. We are paralyzed and helplessly consumed. My friends, God's love is the antidote to the toxin of sin. God, in love, forgives you all your sins. And as you receive this forgiveness, feel the tension melt away. Regain your strength because God has healed your soul. And if you are able, I invite you to stand on your feet. <clears throat> Taking a look around, recognize that you, in fact, are not alone because we are all sinners who are never too far from God. So let's greet each other this morning to show God's love in this place. Turn to the person you know or find a stranger and introduce yourself. You can shake a hand or wave at each other, but love each other as we pass a sign of God's peace. remain standing as we sing.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Together, let's pray. God, these last few weeks, we have reminded each other again and again that we are never too far away from each other, and you are never too far from us. But we humans are fragile. This life tosses us around and bruises us. And even when we stay determined, even when we try very hard to believe, doubt creeps into our hearts. We may believe you are never too far away. We may believe we are never alone. 
But knowing something is true does not always change the way we feel. So in this moment, we pray for every person that feels the pain of exile. We pray for every place that feels shrouded in agony. We pray for every person dying in a place like the cross where even Jesus felt fear. God of Israel, give life to the exiles. We pray for our friends who are hospitalized or who face uncertain health challenges or who fear what lurks in the future. Please bless Kim Steinke, Elaine Sandball, Joanne Wilhelm, Sherry Rothenberger, Donna Jipp, and John Jones. God of Israel, give life to the exiles. We pray for the people of Ukraine who still fight vigorously to defend their homeland. We pray for Russians who flee the draft because they do not want to fight an unholy war. And we pray for those who swallow the lies of tyrants. God of Israel, give life to the exiles. We pray for families who helplessly watch their loved ones succumb to addiction or chronic disease or the unreachable pain of mental illness or even thoughts of suicide. We pray for those who lose themselves to these evils. God of Israel, give life to the exiles. We pray for the people of Florida who have watched a hurricane cast aside the foundations of their homes and their lives. We pray for the people of Pakistan who have also watched mud and water sweep everything they possess. God of Israel, give life to the exiles. We pray for all who feel abused by the church and for atheists who strive to contribute as productive moral members of our society, and for agnostics who still struggle to square faith with doubt. God of Israel, give life to the exiles. We pray for our families, for the exhaustion or emptiness we feel, for the distance we experience from those we love, for the jobs we wish were more satisfying, or the retirement that does not feel restful. God of Israel, give life to the exiles. Despite all these things, despite every gripe and every strain of negativity and every division in this world, we also pray most thankfully for you because you are here waiting for us, embracing us, loving us, challenging us, tending to us like a gentle, patient parent. You are here even when we do not recognize it or when we forget to look. We love you. We pray in your name. Amen. You may be seated.
Thank you for that beautiful meditation on the 23rd Psalm. Today, we are so happy to share with you that our two-year-olds were running around last weekend on a scavenger hunt, discovering all of the treasures that this place hold as their church. And so today, we celebrate with them this milestone of welcome to church and take a look at the video to see what they discovered. Is there anything cuter than a two-year-old? <laughs> I 
I love their big eyes, their bright smiles. As they um, arrive at this milestone, let's offer a prayer blessing upon them. Good and gracious God, we thank you for these two-year-olds in our midst who are well on their way on this journey of discovery, what it means to be your children. So we pray your blessing upon them. We pray your blessing upon those who walk alongside of them, their parents, family members, teachers, mentors, all who surround them in love. Lead them, God, to discover and learn in this place and among these people that you are never too far away, that you are always near, in fact, and that you love us dearly. We pray this in Jesus' name. And God's people said, amen. Julie. God speaks to us in scripture, preaching, song, and prayer. A reading from 2 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I'm sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me as his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to God's own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Word of God, word of life. St. Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. 
The Lord replied, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending the sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink, and later you may eat and drink? Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we have ought to have done. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you in peace from God our Creator, Jesus our Savior, and the Holy Spirit our Comforter. Amen. Please join me in prayer. God, we know that you are never far from us, but sometimes, Lord, it feels like you are. When life clouds our visions of love that you have for us, remind us again of your faithful presence with us. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you today as we continue our sermon series, Never Too Far. It has been a joy to walk together with you through these lectionary readings, to see what they have to say and to remember what they have to tell us about how God is with us. Wonderful stories, but also sometimes challenging stories for us to ponder together these past few weeks. I pray these sermons have been a source of comfort and reassurance for you a reminder of God with you, wherever it may be that you are in your life. It's good for us to stop and look at these reminders of God with us, whether it be in a sermon or in a song or in a prayer or wherever else it may be each day. Sometimes these reminders of God with us come to us in subtle ways, like like for example, when we look back upon our life at all the places where we have been. I myself had a chance to do that recently, just this past week, as I went for a walk together with my wife and my dog, Taz, on a beautiful, cool fall evening. I love this time of year, don't you? It's just a beautiful time when when the hot summer days begin to slip away and, and the leaves begin to turn their colors and the crisp, cool air fills the evenings. It's a great time, a peaceful time of year indeed. And I love to go for these walks, especially in the fall with my wife and Taz. And this past week as we did that, we did like we usually do, we start on our walk and we talk about our day and what each one of us went through and all the things we did, the places we went, and we talk about family and friends and things that we are looking forward to and all those things. And, Well, on this particular walk, we'd talked about that until we ran out of things to say. And we were just walking along, and my mind began to wander, like my wife always says it tends to do. And I started to think about, actually, this story from the Scripture and what I might say to you today about our theme, God with us. As I thought about this message, I began to think back upon my life and all the times that reminded me of God with me, how God is never too far. Sometimes it has been really easy for me to see God with me when I think about all the blessings in my life, God's gift to me of a wonderful family, of wonderful friends, of this, this beautiful ministry that I share together with all of you that I'm so grateful for. When I think about all the ways that God has blessed my life, it's easy to see God with me during those times. But as I kept walking that evening, I began to think back on other times too. Times that were a bit more difficult and challenging. Times in my life when God seemed rather far away. As I walked along, I remembered how God has always shown me faithful love in the good times and in the bad times, and maybe especially in those times when God seemed so far away from me, 
and my faith itself seemed as small as a mustard seed. Maybe the disciples were looking back today too, in this story today, and feeling a little weak and frail in their own faith as they came near to Jesus with their heartfelt request. Lord, they said, increase our faith. Sounds like a strange request from those closest to him, doesn't it? I mean, they had seen what Jesus could do. They had heard his powerful words of God's presence and love with them. I mean, Jesus had called them to join him in his work, had gifted them with the power of the Holy Spirit to do incredible things in Jesus' name, things that they could have never done on their own. If anyone should have had faith in Jesus, it should have been this little ragtag band of disciples that followed along beside him. And yet, there's an earnestness in their request to the Lord today. Lord, increase our faith. Why? What made them think it wasn't strong enough anymore? Did they feel that the faith they once had was slipping away from them? Had all the things that they had been a part of, all the things that they had seen and heard Jesus do, just become too much for them? Had their own fears and their own uncertainties made them feel as if their faith and God was slipping away? Lord, increase our faith because at this time in my life, I'm scared. And I just don't know if I'll be able to hang on to it anymore. Lord, to you. The disciples' request of Jesus really isn't so strange when you stop and think about it. When I look back upon my own life, I've asked the same thing of Jesus on many occasions too, and maybe some of you have as well. This road of life we walk is not always an easy road. There are many things in life that we go through that test our faith, that leave us wondering if what we believe to be true about God really is. It's easy to feel alone sometimes in a world full of sorrows and sadness. These past few years have caused many of us to feel alone in life. The pandemic has tested many people's faith and trust in others, in the people around them, in our leaders, in the people that we love and trust the most, the ones closest to us, even our faith and trust in God. Pandemic isolation, fears of becoming sick or dying, fears of our loved ones becoming sick or dying, stress and burnout after having to care for people for so long, putting others' welfare ahead of our own wants and desires. All these things have tested us to our limits, even at times tested our faith. Does God really care about this pandemic and how it has sought to tear our world apart? And along with this pandemic has come economic strife and social and racial and political divisions and many more things that have come between us. Violence and anger have become almost a regular occurrence on every day's newscast. Wars and rumors of wars, uncertainty about our future and even about our planet's health. How much more bad news can we take? Does God see just how big a mess this world is in? If you love us so much, God, why do you continue to let these things happen? It's an honest question, isn't it? Asked by people of faith throughout history. Each time, life's sorrows have tested us to the core, and perhaps it was at the heart of the disciples' request today, too. Lord, increase our faith. God, you're beginning to feel so very far from us. Remind us again that you're near. Jesus said to the disciples, 
If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Well, shoot. (laughs) What does Jesus' response to the disciples' request sound like? It sounds almost as if Jesus is saying to them and to us, we don't have any faith at all. I mean, I could walk out of the church right now, go out to the first tree I see, stand there and yell at it until my face turned blue, and I doubt if it'd be uprooted and planted in Lake Madison. It just isn't going to happen. So does that mean that I don't have faith at all? Does that mean that the faith that I once had is slipping away from me, being thrown into the sea itself by the hardships and pains of life? Does it mean that all of my prayers, all the things I have trusted in, believed in, and hoped in, have all been for naught? Well, if my faith has been something that has been up to me to create and sustain, then yes. My friends, Faith has never been something that we have created. We didn't choose to have faith in God. We didn't create our faith by reading Scripture or saying the right prayers or doing the right things or living a righteous life. Faith itself is a gift from God that only God can create in us. Yes, reading Scripture and saying our prayers and living the best life we can helps us grow in our faith, but faith itself has never been our doing. It is God's work in us and through us. And maybe that's the point that Jesus is trying to make today. The disciples thought their faith was slipping away. Maybe it was because they had discovered that following Jesus was not as easy as they thought it was going to be. Maybe they felt their faith was slipping away because even though they were Jesus' disciples, bad things were still happening to them. And maybe all their questions about life's unfairness had not been answered the way they thought they should be answered. And maybe they began to question what the future held for them. Maybe they had all the fears and uncertainties and questions that we have rolling around inside of us. They'd made their mistakes, and they were living with guilt and regrets of their own. Maybe they thought they were on the edge of failure. Lord, increase our faith. We must not be doing something right, because right now we feel so very far from you. But even in their uncertainty, Jesus was still right there with them. People of God staying close to God has never been something that has been up to us either. Like faith, staying close to God is something that God chooses to do for us, God's gift to us. When life seems to take that mustard seed of faith from us, when God seems so very far away, look back again, my friends, and remember all the times that God has been there with you. You might not have always seen or felt God there at the time, but God was there with you. It has never been up to us to keep God beside us. It is God's choice to be close to you. Thanks be to our God who is never too far from us. Amen.
please stand. With the whole church, together we confess our faith using those familiar words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. My friends, even the most faithful person can feel far from God's presence, just as Pastor Tim noted. But you do not have to wander the world to discover God's purpose for your life. Just stay still and remain in prayer. In a moment, we will receive our offering. You need to know that a gift of any kind given faithfully to God will bring you into direct contact with God's purpose for this world. We receive today's offering, and I invite the children to come and help receive the noisy offering. Please pray with me. You always remain faithful to your people. Now make good use of our gifts. Use the gift of our time to ease the burden of the panicked. Use our courage to create a shelter for the one who feels afraid. Use our money to open the door for our neighbor out in the cold. God, you live here and you work in this place. Use us to harvest the hope this community needs to survive. In your name we pray, amen. Indeed, Jesus is here. We gather around the table he has prepared where he, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread and 
gave thanks and gave it, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and then gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, we take our place at your table by praying the grace you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. When Jesus broke bread with his friends, they already had one foot on the path to betrayal. But Jesus asked them to eat anyway, so they would always know how to find their way back to God. We stray from God too. But Jesus offers this bread and this cup right now, so we can ever remember that we are never too far from God's love. Come. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. We believe that wherever you might be, God brought us together for this very moment that we have shared. So we pray that you have sensed God's presence as we've worshiped today, simply by being part of this community called Our Saviors. We are church together, and we value the partnership that we share. You need to know that we love hearing from you about how we can best serve you. We're working hard to nurture community and serve those in need wherever the need exists. So be sure to stay in touch. We also need to let you know that these past several months have been challenging at Our Saviors after a couple of pretty intense storms hit our neighborhood. Our broadcast ministry took a direct hit, in fact, and it's been a lengthy process to recover. We're not quite there yet, actually, but we continue to work diligently to get everything back in working order so that our ministry can continue being a blessing to folks like you. To that end, we invite you to support our recovery efforts. In the past few months, it's been necessary to replace cameras and other essential equipment to the tune of about $60,000. Would you consider making an investment today that would help our broadcast ministry fully recover? You may give securely online at oslchurch.com forward slash giving or by simply texting the word sharing to 73256. Thanks again for the partnership we share and for your generosity. May God bless you in the week ahead by helping you connect your faith to everyday life. Take care. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.